Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. In this set of videos, we will understand about the cursor functionality and interview questions related to cursor. So let us start with our first question like what is a cursor and what are all the types of cursor. So before understanding what is a cursor, let us understand few PL SQL code so that our understanding with respect to cursor will be better. So here is a simple anonymous block where I am trying to fetch a name of an employee into a variable. So I've just declared a variable called v underscore name as scalar variable which can hold one particular uh, varchar or a string data type. So in this example, the select statement is going to retrieve or fetch a name of one employee and it is just going to store in a, a scalar variable. Let me just execute this uh, block. Obviously, as expected, uh, the value is stored in this particular variable and it is just getting printed. Suppose if you want to access the list of a name or if you want to store the list of all the name into this variable, then it is not possible. For example, suppose if I remove this var condition, this particular select statement will try to fetch the all the employees from the name of all the employees from the employee table and it will try to store that particular list into this scalar variable. Obviously, a scalar variable will not be able to hold more than one value. Then in that case, this anonymous block will throw an error. So let me just execute this block now. See, as expected, this is throwing an exception saying that exact fetch returns more number of rows because the scalar variable is not able to or not capable of holding more than one value. But our expectation is we want to store more than one value in a variable or we want to just iterate through the list of name. So in that case, we have actually two options. Instead of using a scalar variable, we can go ahead with the composite variable. That is our option one. So let me show you the example. So here is the same example, but instead of using a scalar variable, now I'm just going to use a nested table. As you can see here, I've just declared a nested table of type varchar2 of 100. Then I've declared a variable of the nested table type. So in this variable, I'm just selecting all the employee. As you can see here, the statement number six, uh, I've used the bulk collect. So the list of all the names will be loaded into this particular variable. Then finally, I'm just iterating through that nested variable to just print it. So instead of print, printing this, if you want any uh, functionality to, to be implemented, either we can implement here itself, or you can write a separate procedure and you can call it from here. So let me just execute this. So as you can see here, the code got executed and it just uh, loaded the entire list of name into a nested table variable and we just iterated through that and it is just printing. So this is one way of implementing the functionality that is uh, getting the list of name and iterating the name and implementing whatever the functionality we want to do. So there is another way to implement this that is called cursor. So obviously I will explain in detail about cursor in the rest of the videos also. This is just for you to get uh, understanding about how a cursor code will look like. So exactly the same functionality I have implemented here using a cursor. So first we need to define a cursor. So nothing but a name for a query. So we first we need to give a name for a select statement. So here is the cursor definition. Once the cursor is defined, we need to open that cursor using the open keyword. At the time of opening, the query get executed and the information will be loaded into a memory. See, this is the key learning here. In case of cursor, cursor will not load the entire information into a variable like the way we saw in the previous example. See, in case of like a nested table example, what we uh, saw just before, the entire information is loaded into a variable. Then we are iterating through the variable and we are printing. Whereas in this case, this is a named location for the memory where the query stores its result. So using that particular name, now we are iterating through that and we are just displaying it. So let me just execute it. So in this case also the code got executed and we just got the same list of name. Okay. So the key thing here is that cursor is nothing but a memory location. We can say that it is a a pointer memory location or pointer to a memory location. So from an interview aspect, cursor is nothing but a pointer to the memory location where the information about the select statement or DML statement got executed. So this is about cursor. So from an interview point, I just want to highlight the answer. You need to say cursor is nothing but a memory location 
where the queries information and the queries results got stored so from uh, uh, from the way the cursor gets executed it's broadly classified into two type see any statement any select statement or any sql statement executed by oracle is through cursor only even if you log into sql plus you are trying to execute a statement oracle opens a memory location executes it returns the value to the user and it closes it in that case it is called implicit cursor that means oracle automatically opens a memory location executes the statement returns the result closes the memory location this cursor is called implicit cursor whereas when a user gives a name for that memory location and he is trying to access the memory location one by one once he accessed the entire information and if a developer closes that memory location that is called explicit explicit cursor there are few uh, subtypes of the explicit cursor i won't say as a subtype instead these are all part of the explicit cursor or a named cursor so the ex example what we just now see is an example for a named cursor there are few other types of cursors also but all these things fall under the explicit cursor or a named cursor category only so there is another type called reference cursor and there is another thing called a for cursor and within reference cursor there is two more subtype one is called strongly typed ref uh, ref cursor another one is called weakly typed ref cursor i will talk about in detail about strongly typed ref cursor and weakly typed ref cursor in subsequent video section okay so this is at a very high level if you want from an interview point you need to say uh, cursors are broadly classified into like an implicit cursor and explicit cursor okay uh, just i want to reiterate the key term key learning here any statement executed by oracle or through implicit cursor oracle automatically opens a memory location executes it and returns the value so anything what a developer manages by giving a name for a select statement opens it exe uh, loop through the data and gets the information so this is called the explicit cursor okay just from an purely from an interview point a cursor is a pointer to a memory um, memory location where the information about the statement got executed along with its result so implicit cursor is nothing but it's automatically managed by pl sql or oracle so this is the very uh, important point because this is what is expected by the interviewers implicit cursors are automatically opened managed by pl sql so every time you execute a statement oracle automatically opens it uh, returns the result and closes it but we don't have a control over the implicit cursors this is another key point we will not have any control over it but we can get few information about the implicit cursor through its attribute that we will see later in uh, when i talk about the attributes but other than getting the information from its attributes we will not have any hold on the implicit cursor whereas explicit cursor are fully managed by a developer where he gives a name for a cursor and he associate a query with that cursor he opens the cursor he typically loop through the cursor to get the information and he then he closes the cursor so the example what we just saw is an example for an explicit cursor where he typically gives a name and he associate a query to that particular name and a developer will open that uh, cursor using a open keyword so at this point the cursor query will get executed and the result will be stored in a memory location and he can loop through the uh, cursor to get the whatever the information he want and finally he can close the thing using close keyword so this example i just want to give you so that you will get a feel of how a cursor code will look like we'll we'll see in detail about all these things in the next set of videos i hope you would have learned something new if yes please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature videos interview questions sql practical question and concept videos if you want any questions to be answered you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id thanks a lot for watching this video